Chapter 1 The Red Cafe Marshall wasn't particularly fond of his job at the cafe. He didn't hate it either, it just seemed very bland to him to be cooped up around coffee and scones all day, doing nothing but taking orders and waiting on tables. What he did enjoy was the open mic night on Fridays, where he often took the stage with his red guitar and played for the nighttime patrons of the shop. Le Café Rouge wasn't anything particularly special in that city block. It had blood-red awnings that matched the interior theme of dark, warm colors. There were five small steps leading slightly down into the café from the street. Inside the walls were painted in different shades of reds and whites and warm browns that matched the curtains that hung against walls and places. The wall to the left of the door was made completely of paneled glass and it looked out onto the busy streets of Toronto. The tables were all made of a dark cherry wood, as was the main counter that people placed their orders at. Overall, the café was like a warm place where someone might want to spend a few hours reading a book or just sitting with a cup of coffee to watch a rainstorm pass. Today was just another busy Friday morning with the morning rush of people headed to work. Marshall's least favorite part was the fact that he and his little sister Marceline had to be at the café at six in the freaking morning in order to open the shop. He was just glad that he wasn't one of the pastry chefs, because they had to get there at four in the morning. Seriously, who in their right mind wants to be anywhere but a nice warm bed at six in the morning? Despite the excruciatingly painful wake-up time, the café was a pleasant job. It also paid the bills for their apartment and his sister's schooling, which was a plus. Marshall was also never really the type for complaining. He always figured that if you ended up somewhere it was for a reason and there was no point in complaining. Slacking off on the other hand, he was really good at that. Marshall, get off your lazy ass and come help me set the tables. We have twenty minutes until we have to open the freaking cafe. Marceline practically hissed at her older brother as she threw his apron at him followed by a few napkins. Marshall groaned and opened his eyes to look around the café from his relaxed position on one of the many black leather couches. It was too early for this kind of shit, and he just wanted to go back to sleeping. Hmm, you seem to be doing an awesome job though, Mars. Why would I want to interrupt? He chuckled and laid a napkin over his eyes so that he could hopefully get some more shut-eye before it was time to actually work. Marceline promptly stormed over to where her brother was and grabbed his ear before she tugged him to his feet by the poor abused hearing appendage. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, now I get it. Sheesh, no need for the use of violence in the cafe, sis, he said as he stumbled along behind her. His arms were promptly stuffed with napkins and he trudged along the floor to the tables that had not been set yet with a sour expression upon his face. It was a chilly day in September, especially at 6.15 in the morning, and Marshall Lee pulled his hoodie closer around his thin frame. He folded each napkin as well as he could before laying it on the table, and in no time all of the tables were prepped and ready for people to sit at. An apron smacked him in the face again, and he grabbed it and held it up. You know, it's not very polite to throw things at your superiors, he said in a joking tone as he tied the apron around his waist and went over to the main counter to grab a notepad and several pens. He glanced over at Marceline, who was pulling her hair back into a ponytail in an attempt to keep it out of the way. It's only impolite if it's a stranger and not my dork older brother. She tossed back as she finished tying up her hair and made sure that most of it was pulled back. Her hair still dangled down past her but and Marshall shook his head. I am not not a dork, you're just jealous that I'm so attractive. He dramatically put a hand to his chest before he chuckled and checked the time on his phone. There were only seven minutes left until they were required to open so he walked over towards the door and flipped the closed sign to open for them. Now all they had to do was wait for people to come in before they could leave for the day. Marshall Lee lived for the quiet moments, since the cafe was usually buzzing in the mornings. The cafe itself was fairly short-staffed to save money, so they ended up working full-day shifts with just the two of them many times. He moved right back to the main counter and leaned against it with a sigh. Are you going to play tonight? Marceline posed the question out of thin air as she pinned back a bit more of her hair and looked at her brother curiously. 
Marshall raised an eyebrow and thought about it before nodding to her. Yeah, I don't see why not. Why don't you ever play with me anymore? That makes it more fun, he said as he stuck out his tongue at his kid sister. It had become a habit of his to stick his tongue out whenever he was teasing someone or making a really lame joke about something. It gave him away but his sister thought it was hilarious and even tried to grab his tongue sometimes. Because I'm not as good as you at it, and I'm just not as good in front of crowds I guess. She said with a nonchalant shrug as she rechecked the cash register for about the third time. Marshall simply rolled his eyes at his sister. It's because you don't practice anymore. You're just as good as I am though. Or maybe you were planning to talk to that girl you're always chatting up online. He watched with satisfaction as Marceline's cheeks heated up and grew slightly rose-tinted from the mention of her online friend. Marshall knew that his sister had been talking to some girl online almost constantly for over a month. She would always have her phone out or be on her laptop talking to the same girl over Skype messaging. It was pretty cute how obviously Marcy was crushing on this girl. I was not. Just shut up you glob of laziness. Besides, we have customers, she said, thankfully taking the distraction to get drink orders from the man and woman who walked in. Marshall simply let that topic drop for the moment, as he also began his duty of serving people their drinks and desserts throughout the day. By the end of the day Marshall felt like his arms were going to fall off and his head was buzzing with orders for caramel cappuccinos, with a double shot of espresso and only a bit of cream that had to be low-fat. He never understood the human obsession with getting the perfect drink down to the very last detail of how much fat was in the milk or cream that they added. Then again he didn't even really drink coffee so maybe he was just never meant to understand that part. He contemplated the many different kinds of drinks he knew how to make as they started to set up for the open mic night. They moved a few tables and chairs around so that they more easily faced the small stage that was present in the corner of the cafe. The afternoon rush of people had ended and the cafe was completely empty except for the two of them. Eventually he knew that the nighttime coffee drinkers would come around to listen to him play, and maybe even a few of them would get up and play with him, or by themselves. The stage was easy enough to share in this situation. Marshall Lee hoped that one day he could get paid to write his own songs and get them recorded as a musician. Playing his guitar was his favorite thing to do in his job at Le Café Rouge, so why not pursue a career in what he completely loved? It made sense to him in every way, some people didn't think it was a logical choice though. He wasn't really complaining since he did have a pretty nice gig here that got him some nice tips at the end of the night. As patrons filled the small cafe, Marshall sat down on the chair on stage and picked up his guitar, smoothly sliding it out of its case and into his familiar grip. He strummed at the tightly wound metal strings and checked to make sure that they were in tune before he cleared his throat and started to play a softer song that would fit the mood of the cafe itself. His fingers glided across the strings and the upper frets on the guitar easily, and he closed his eyes and let the music flow. Eventually he let his voice join the flow of music in the form of lyrics that mostly just came to his head in the moment. It was a gift to be able to play and come up with music so effortlessly. There was of course the fact that he had practiced and learned about guitars for a large portion of his life, which made it easier to improvise such wonderful songs. Those that were actively listening were completely spellbound by the male's voice and guitar playing. Marshall came to a close of the first song and opened his eyes to look out at the crowd. There was soft applause and he smirked slightly before his eyes rested on a male at the back of the cafe that seemed to be clapping just a bit slower than the rest of them. Marshall took into account the male's pink hair and vibrant colors of clothes and immediately he was curious as he paused his strumming to look over the male more closely. The pink-haired man made eye contact and smiled happily but still remained slightly shocked at the back of the room. Marshall was taken aback that he was being stared at so intensely but he wrote it off as the other guy simply experiencing his playing for the first time as he went back to playing. He swore that he felt eyes on himself several times, and it felt like Pinky was staring directly at him. Of course it was normal to be stared at on stage, except that this stare felt different than the rest but he managed to shake off the nerves he had started feeling as he pursed his lips together to hide his amused smirk. Chapter 2. Just Another Vacation 
Bonnie and Bubba Gumball were siblings, twins in fact, that had decided in the heat of the San Diego summer that they wanted to take a vacation somewhere cooler. It was no trouble for them to book a flight to Toronto, Canada and arrive in the cooler climate only a week later. Bubba found himself immediately enjoying the city despite his sister's slight complaints. They had checked into their hotel and set their bags onto their respective beds. So, where do you think we should go? We have an entire week up here after all, Bonnie said as she unpacked her shoes and set them into the closet. They both had quite the affinity for the color pink and had started dyeing their hair together years before. It was a fun way for them to bond and keep up their twin look by dyeing their hair the same shade of bright pink. I honestly have no idea. I don't even know what this town has to offer, he said as he folded his shirts into a drawer. It had truly been whimsical of them to hop on a flight and head their butts up to Canada, but what was life without a bit of spontaneity? Too much spontaneity was out of the question, though. The whole go-with-the-flow attitude was a big pain in the ass to him. Even if their trip was spontaneous, he had still spent a week planning everything. Gumball stood up and looked around the room before he moved over towards the window to look out at the streets. Why don't we just wander around for a bit? We could write down some places that we wanted to see later, or activities we could go do. He shrugged and looked over at his sister who seemed very preoccupied with her phone. Bonnie, Bonnie Bull! He watched as his sister jumped slightly and looked up at him with her wide eyes. H.M.? Were you saying something? She asked innocently as the phone was left on the bed and his sister went back to unpacking. Bubba heaved a sigh and looked at his sister with narrowed eyes and crossed arms. Overall, he looked extremely unamused. Yes, I was trying to figure out what we were going to do, but you were quite distracted. Who are you talking to all the time anyway? He asked as he took his now empty suitcase and put it against the wall so that it was out of the way. He walked over towards his sister and shoved his hands into the pockets of his pink hoodie sweater. He liked pink, okay? It wasn't a crime. Pink was a very manly color. Besides who needed to be manly when you were extremely smart and wealthy. Wait, that sounded really shallow. Just a friend of mine. Bonnie said a bit awkwardly before she also put her suitcase against the wall. Luckily the response pulled Bubba out of his steadily crashing thought train, and he shrugged off his sister's answer. It was her business who she talked to. As curious as he was, it was rude to pry into someone's personal life, even if it was your twin sister. Fine, let's go get something to eat then. We can walk around until we find a place that will suit our tastes. Okay, you lead the way then, since I know you're picky about your food, he She said with a sly grin in response to her brother. She followed him out of their hotel room. Both of them made sure to have a key card so that they could get back in by themselves if they needed to. After more walking than either of them wanted to do in the first place, Bonnie was ready to head back to the hotel. They had arrived in the afternoon, and the day was transitioning well into evening at this point. They had found a little Italian place that served some truly excellent chicken marsala and tiramisu to both of them. It had been an interesting couple of hours of walking. Yet it wasn't until their feet were sore and they were tired of walking that they discovered the subway system. It was a miracle how much easier that made it to travel places. They both parted ways at the transit station near their hotel since Bubba wasn't quite done exploring. He had a knack for curiosity that often led him into situations, but it was also his reason for wanting to become a scientist. His curiosity led him to great experiments that he both enjoyed and got good grades for, not that he was bragging or anything. He walked along the street with his hands in his pockets as he took everything in. New places were always exciting, and one of the best parts about it was just breathing in the new field to the city. Their family didn't vacation together often, his parents were always working, but the few times that they had made up the majority of his favorite memories. He could remember the time they went to the UK and stayed in England for a few days before venturing around most of Europe on the trains. It was a fun time when he and his sister were much younger, and yet he could still remember it clearly. Vibrantly, in fact. Sometimes he would lie awake and think about all the places they had been and relive one of the memories while drifting off to sleep. 
As childish as it sounded it was fun, and he really enjoyed it, and just by inhaling the Canadian air he could tell that this was going to be one of those trips that he would remember for a long time. Hopefully forever. Eventually the young man came upon a cafe, long after the street lamps had started to illuminate the streets. He looked at the sign outside, inviting patrons in for the weekly open mic adventure. It sounded chipper and pleasant enough so he carefully descended the five steps to the door before he slipped inside. The stage had already been set, and he eyed the guitarist for a moment before he took notice of the please seat yourself sign. Not wanting to disturb any of the patrons he calmly sat down at a table near the back. As he got settled the music came to an end. The patrons of the small cafe clapped lightly for the boy on stage. Do you want something to drink? Bubba looked up at the girl with long hair that stood to his left and held out a pen and a notepad. She obviously worked there, and he nodded slowly even as he felt her look over his appearance and cock an eyebrow. Um, yes, just some hot chocolate if it's not too much of a bother, he said politely as he sat up in his chair. He took note of how long this girl's hair was. Marceline, he learned quickly, was her name from the nicely printed name tag she wore, nodded and wrote it down before she smirked at him. It's my job to take your order, of course it's not a bother, she said with a quite amused huff. Bubba flushed slightly and nodded in agreement. All right, haha, sorry. He apologized before he watched her turn around and head over towards the main counter. His attention was quickly captured by the guitarist on stage again as the male started to sing and hum along with the song he was playing. Bubba knew that an open mic usually meant that an amateur would take the stage to try and get noticed, but in no way would he call the music flooding through his ear canals amateur. It was beautiful, and it fit the mood of the cafe and even made Bubba want to light some candles in a strange nostalgic way. He was so engrossed in the playing that he didn't notice when his drink had been put in front of him. It wasn't until Marceline cleared her throat next to him, and he looked up to see her smirking that he realized he had been openly staring at the man. Oh, excuse my rudeness. Thank you for the drink. He managed to regain some of his composure as he shifted in his chair and cleared his throat awkwardly. He picked up the hot mug of liquid chocolate goodness before he took a careful sip. His eyes traveled back towards the man on the stage, and the question rose up past his lips before he could stop it. Who is he? Does he play here often? He asked with a hint of desperation to his voice. The man was an enigma to him at this moment, and he wanted to learn more about him, about his music, and how often he played. A million and one questions were on the tip of his tongue, and only by biting his lip did he manage to keep them all back. The girl simply continued to smirk at him before she crossed her arms and cocked a hip to the side and answered indifferently. Yeah, he works here and plays every Friday night. Why are you such a curious pink boy? She asked the question with her eyes trained on the male before they flicked down to meet his own curious orbs. He looked down at his mug quickly and thought about her question. His voice sounds really nice, I guess. Wait, do you know his name? He works with you, correct? He looked back up at the mail and strained his eyes to see if he could make out a name tag, but there was an obvious lack of any kind of tag, name, or no name. He heard the scoff from beside him and frowned up at the female. Why don't you ask him yourself? Besides, he's only supposed to dominate the mic for about half an hour anyway. She grinned at him and turned to wave slightly at the mail before she tapped her wrist to signal time to the musician. Bubba pouted at her answer but he understood the importance of asking the man that question personally. He went back to sipping his drink, but the next time he looked up at the singer his eyes and body were locked in place by the captivating warm reddish-brown color of the other male's eyes. It was some time before he even realized that he had not only been caught staring at him, but he had also continued to stare directly into the other's eyes. It was somewhat comforting to think that the singer was also staring back at him but it was still nerve-wracking and he quickly looked down at his mug of hot cocoa as soon as the boy broke eye contact. It felt as if a weight had lifted off his chest and he could breathe more easily again. It was wrong for someone to have that much power over him with a simple look, and it really did unnerve him in a slight manner. When the male ceased playing and left the stage, 
Bubba had hoped to catch his attention and get to talk to him a bit. However, the other boy simply put his guitar back into its case and headed straight back into the kitchen through a side door and disappeared. He deflated slightly until the door swung open, only for Marceline to head out with a couple of drinks to hand out to patrons of the cafe. He frowned and took to stirring his drink furiously as if he could stir his own thoughts away. It was silly to be so caught up with someone just because he thought they had an excellent singing voice. He felt that if he never learned the male's name he would just die, but of course that sounded way too childish, and he was no longer a child. He was so deep in his own thoughts as he stared at his liquid chocolate drink that he actually startled when someone tapped on his table. He looks up quickly only to feel his jaw go slack as he looks up at the male standing before him in a simple red flannel shirt with dark gray stripes. The man was flawless it seemed, especially as he smirked at him and the doubtlessly dumb expression he had on his face. Did you need anything? The boy asked in a rich tone that seemed to mock the way in which he had been singing earlier. Bubba swallowed and found himself smiling as he stirred his half-empty mug of hot cocoa. Ah uh, no, not exactly at least. He trailed off for a moment before picking up again quite rapidly. Actually yes, my name is Bubba and I heard you playing not long ago. I was wondering what your name might be, just curiosity. He wanted to drown himself in the remaining two inches of his drink for how ridiculous he sounded. Really, how awkward was he going to make this? He was interested in the man's music and yet he was asking for his name as if he were approaching the President of the United States. Bubba watched a bit too intently as the male chuckled and just reached out to pat the top of his head. The name's Marshall, Marshall Lee. Hey, you're a cute kid, Bubba. He said with a cocky grin as he ruffled the male's hair and then stepped away from him to go wait on another table and get paid compliments. Bubba almost exploded. He could feel his cheeks heat up with rage as the feeling of those fingers patting him on the head lingered like the bone-cold feeling of sticking your fingers in a bucket of ice. He was not a kid. In fact, he was doubtlessly much older than Marshall just by appearances. It was one thing to call him cute, which was demeaning in his own way, but to call him a kid and ruffle his hair like that. No, no, and oh. Absolutely not. Those were demeaning and terrible and Bubba found himself gritting his teeth. Why you little, I should. He growled out the words as his cheeks continued to be hot and angry to match his internal emotional lava pit of frustration. He caught the other male's attention and frowned at him. I'm not a kid, you asshole. I happen to be over the legal age, thank you very much. He said huffily before he crossed his arms as if proving an all-important point. Marshall simply raised an eyebrow and laughed before he walked by the male and tapped him on the nose. Whatever you say, Bubblegum, you're still a kid if you wear an expression like that, he said with a laugh before he disappeared back around the corner to the kitchen. He was completely and entirely furious, and it wasn't long before he had laid money down on the table, including a tip for Marceline, and left the cafe in a flustered and angry state. He muttered to himself about what an intolerable person that Marshall Lee was and how he would be lucky if he never ran into him again. This was day one of their Canada trip and he had been right of course. This trip was going to be memorable. Chapter 3. Coffee Machine Love Bubba clearly remembered feeling outraged and offended as he had stormed out of the cafe the previous night. He hadn't even been able to explain to Bonnie Bull why he was so furious before he had slipped into his bed and turned out the lights. Clearly the man had upset him, and it was always a good idea to stay away from things that upset you. Therefore, for the life of him, Bubba Gumball could not figure out why he was standing anxiously outside the cafe at eight in the morning. He rocked on his heels nervously as he pursed his lips. This was a bad idea. A very, very bad idea. Now if he had wanted to get upset and be angry at something then it was a good idea, but mostly it was just a downright terrible idea. Curiosity did in fact kill the cat and as Bubba slowly descended those five short steps into the cafe, that dead cat's name was Bubba Gumball. He pushed open the door, causing a small bell to go off as he entered the premises. Already he could think of a thousand and one reasons to turn tail and run like hell back to the hotel and his sister. Sadly, 
His mind was having none of that so he strolled right up to the counter and opened his mouth. I would like a chai tea latte please with... He completely faltered as the girl standing behind the counter turned around with a smirk that screamed mockery at him. That's good to know, except that usually you wait to be seated before you order hun. Marceline said with a sly smile at his defeated expression. Oh right. My apologies, I'll go sit down. He said humbly as his cheeks flared with embarrassment. Bubba shuffled off towards a small table near the large glass window and sat himself down. Just like that, his confidence was down, and now he had one thousand and two reasons to turn tail and run. He had completely made a fool of himself in a matter of seconds. The more he sat there the more he dreaded the fact that he had wound up in front of the cafe again. The problem was that he didn't even remember purposefully walking to the cafe. He had simply gone for a light morning walk in his dark purple jeans and pink sweater, and bam! There it was in all of its red mocking glory right in front of him. The pink-haired man heaved a sigh and burrowed his face in his hands in frustration. What am I even doing here? He bemoaned out loud as he slumped in the dark wood chair. Well, most people order coffee, it is a cafe after all. Bubba lurched up in his seat at the familiar tenor voice and his eyes widened. Marshal Lee stood before him in a black button-up shirt with an equally black apron around his waist. The urge to flee, panic and beat the man senseless all surfaced all at the same time and came out as an awkwardly stifled noise of surprise. Marshall simply raised an eyebrow at the man's response before he chuckled and took the pen from behind his ear. I overheard that you wanted a chai tea latte, anything else? The cockiness was still present in his voice, but Bubba found the man to be rather polite, as was expected when one was working as a server. And yes, that is exactly what I wanted. And nothing else, thank you, he said with an awkward politeness to his tone. It was quite the contrast to the smooth, relaxed tone the other male had used. Awesome, I'll have that right out for you, Bubblegum, he said with a grin. Bubba immediately felt his defenses go up as he puffed out his chest slightly. Please don't call me that, it's not my name you know, he said in a haughty manner as he leveled a glare at the other man. Marshall cocked an eyebrow and attempted to hide his grin by pursing his lips. Then what should I call you? Gummy? Blow pop. Gotta be something pink related. He chuckled at the end of his words. My name is Bubba, and I would like it if you actually used it. He delivered his response with slightly puffed out cheeks as he turned his displeased glare onto the helpless table. All right then, Bubba, one chai latte coming right up. Marshall slid the pen back behind his ear before he turned and walked away from the man's table. Bubba could at least admit that it was some progress. It slowly occurred to him that he had already allowed Marshall to get under his skin way too much. He needed to gain some ground or abandon ship, otherwise he would just get swept up in the other man's pace. Marshall had successfully avoided an awkward situation once again. As soon as the pink-haired man re-entered the cafe he had come to the realization that he had completely forgotten the male's name from the previous night. So in order to avoid an awkward situation, he had gotten Bubba to tell him his name again. Plus it was always a bonus if the man got a little bit peeved. As he made the chai latte, Marshall contemplated how the other man had stormed out of the cafe the night before. He grinned cheekily as he remembered the flushed and downright furious expression he had caused on the other male completely by accident. He had been attempting to be honest and flattering when he had called the male a cute kid, but obviously he had stomped with full force on a sensitive nerve. Marshall chuckled and shook his head as he poured the cream into the tall coffee mug and made it into a heart with a swiping hand motion. With a smirk he carried the drink over to the mail and set it down in front of him. One expertly made chai latte, the best you'll ever have, he said with plenty of fanfare and pride before he stepped back a bit and watched the mail slyly. He pretended to be occupied with his notepad as Bubba's eyebrows shot up at the obvious heart shape in the foam on his drink. Is that a heart? The pink-haired male asked in obvious confusion. Marshall faked innocence as he blinked and leaned over to look at the mug. Well, would you look at that? I guess the coffee machine has a thing for you. 
he said nonchalantly as he stood up straight again. He looked down at his notepad again only to feel eyes on him. Slowly Marshall looked up to meet the male's rather sarcastic look. The coffee machine? Really? What? Coffee machines have feelings too. Don't discriminate against them, man. With a shrug he watched as Bubba rolled his eyes and took a drink of the coffee. He took in the male's expression of bliss and smiled. Good right? I told you it would be the best you'd ever had, he said with a knowing look and nod of his head. The male casually moved to sit in the chair across from Bubba and looked at him with a lazy smile upon his face. Bubba did really enjoy the flavor of the drink but he had to purse his lip at the comment. Maybe not the best but certainly good, came the reply as Bubba continued to take sips of the drink. Marshall found himself watching for a bit before he realized how decidedly creepy that was and instead turned his gaze out the window. He looked at the clouds that had decided to grace them with their presence today, like most other days, and thought about the man sitting across from him. Aren't you supposed to be working right now? Marshall turned to look back at Bubba and made eye contact with the male. He shrugged and leaned back in his chair nonchalantly. He was very good at slacking off. Nah, Marcy has it covered, besides why work when I could be teasing you? He said with a sly smirk. Sadly, his comment had to be completely ruined by Marceline coming over and crossing her arms over her chest. I have it covered? I can only serve half the tables in this cafe, Marshall Lee. Get your butt up and stop flirting with customers. His butt was promptly yanked from the chair as Marceline grabbed him by his ear and pulled him from the table. If you have never been pulled around by your ear before then let me inform you. It really fucking hurts. He whined and closed one eye in pain as he tried to keep up with the woman. Ah, oh, oh, oh. Marcy, that hurts. He complained loudly as he was pulled along. Marshall looked back at the table, and he grinned as he saw Bubba laughing and smiling at his expense. Good, so the male could both look completely angry and still be cute but he could also be cute and happy. It was nice to know that even if it was at his poor ear's expense, he could get Bubba to laugh somehow. However his smile turned into a grimace as Marceline tugged particularly hard on his hearing appendages. Once his ear was done being pulled off he went around to his tables to make drinks and serve desserts to whomever asked for them. It was a drag, but it was his job, and he would occasionally pass by Bubba's table and give the man a wink. Sadly Marceline would promptly have him moving on to the next table with a well-placed glare. You could feel that look burning into the back of your head even from across the room. Marcy wasn't all evil glare and work work work, really that was just when her brother was slacking off. They were both really relaxed people and mostly it was just her way of teasing and getting back at him for being her older brother. Despite his sister's looks and the other patrons of the cafe, Marshall stopped by Bubba's table one more time to refill his drink for him. He took the empty mug and brought the mail a fresh one with the same type of heart detailed in the foam. There you go, straight from the love sick coffee machine. I should really get that thing fixed. I cannot tell you how many customers it has flirted with today. It was all fun and games as he watched Bubba look at the drink again. Indeed, it's a crime for it to flirt with so many people. Especially if no one is allowed to take it home. The male replied casually as he stirred the drink to make the heart disappear into the creamy liquid. Marshall chuckled and looked over towards the coffee machine in question. You're probably right. I will have to reprimand it later. He paused and looked over at Bubba before he leaned on the table slightly. It was now or never. It was obvious that the male was not from around here and what if he didn't come back? Marshall prided himself on his boldness in most circumstances, and he was willing to take this chance. He slowly slid a piece of paper across the table to the other male as he smirked at him. Speaking of later, are you free this afternoon? I noticed that you don't seem to be from this area and I happen to be excellent at giving tours. He grinned at the pink-haired male as he raised a questioning eyebrow. Rejection was not something he was completely unfamiliar with, but he also tended to keep prying and poking and prodding until that rejection turned into a yes. You could say he was persistent, but he was also slightly arrogant and he knew that he looked good, so confidence was not something he lacked. He was hopeful that all things considered, 
he wouldn't be flat out rejected. Bubba looked at the piece of paper with a phone number on it, and his eyes widened before he looked up at Marshall. It was obvious that things were going through his mind and Marshall just had to laugh at the response he was given. What will I tell the coffee machine, though? I would hate to hurt its feelings. Marshall chuckled and looked over at the coffee machine only to meet Marceline's eyes. He grinned and waved to his sister before he stood up. I'll sweet-talk it for you. It's a pretty reasonable machine. After all, it is flirting with everyone in the room. He made a sweeping gesture before he stood up straight and turned to walk away from the table. However, he paused and looked over his shoulder with a grin. I get off at 1.30, he said before heading behind the counter to where Marceline was. He waggled his tongue at his sister teasingly, and she reached out to tug on it. He winced and tried to pull his tongue back into his mouth unsuccessfully. Marcy, can you let go of my tongue? Words were difficult when someone was holding on to your tongue with their thumb and pointer finger. He poked his sister to try and get her to release his tongue, but she was very adamant about keeping it tight in her grasp. Luckily she was not grabbing onto his tongue piercing, because that would just be painful and not cool. What did I tell you about flirting with people while you're on shift? She said with a cocky grin as she glanced over at the pink-haired male who looked extremely amused at the abuse that Marshall was being put through. Marshall flushed slightly but managed to give her a look right back. You are just jealous that I can get some and you can finally his tongue was released and he quickly pulled it back into his mouth and wiped the corner of his lips where he had started to drool. He glared lightly at his little sister before he reached out and suddenly ruffled her hair, completely messing up how she had pulled it back. With a laugh and quick footwork he was up the other side of the counter and on his way towards some tables. He looked over his shoulder as Marceline glared playfully at him and went about fixing her hair. Marshall was excited about his lunch break now, he had already started formulating plans to tease and poke fun at the other male. Maybe he would bring his guitar too, just because Bubba had seemed to enjoy it so much the previous night. All he had to do was wait until 1.30. Chapter 4. Half to Death Bubba waited as patiently as he could for the mail to finish his shift. He really had nowhere else to go besides the cafe, and eventually his boredom led to the removal of his cell phone from his pocket. If he were to buy another latte it would be a waste of money since he had already had two, even if they were rather heavenly. His cell phone was one of the newest models of the droid smartphones, it might have been an iPhone had he not previously broke the two he'd had. Really it was too easy to break and when it came to phones he was always breaking them. So he had quite the protective case on his smartphone in order to protect it from himself. His last phone had died a tragic death when he had gotten too upset and had thrown it at the door. However the door had been opened at that precious time and instead it went clattering down the hard stairs until all that was left was a shattered screen and broken pieces. He was an abusive phone owner. The clouds that had been setting in previously had finally patched up all of the blue holes, leaving the sky a rather dark gray color. Bubba didn't really mind it since all he ever saw was sunshine. A change of pace was nice from time to time. However, he despised the rain. It made his skin feel gross and clammy whenever he got caught in a rainstorm and he avoided them as much as possible. As he sat there and contemplated the weather like a boring prude, before his phone sounded with a message. He looked down curiously and unlocked the screen. It was from Bonnie, who seemed rather put out that he had ditched her that morning. With a sigh he texted her back rapidly in hopes that he could quell her anger somewhat. My apologies, Bonnie. I went for a quick morning walk and ended up at a cafe. He pursed his lips and then proceeded to give her directions to the cafe. He didn't really want to leave his sister alone for an extended amount of time, because that was simply rude, but then again Marshall's invitation for a city tour hadn't seemed like an open one. The pink-haired male sighed as he looked out at the cloud passing overhead. He wondered absently what he was getting himself into. While Marshall had seemed mostly nice and funny, he had also completely aggravated him more than once. He had known the male for what, not even a full day. What was he really getting himself into? Bubba reminded himself that it was just a short tour of parts of the city. It would be informative, 
fun and helpful. Or at least that's what he wanted to believe. The time rolled around for them to leave and Bubba was shaken from his thoughts as someone drummed their fingers on the table. Standing next to him was Marshall in a red plaid shirt with a gray zip-up jacket slung over one arm carelessly. Ready for your awesome tour? He asked with a cheeky grin that had him sticking his tongue out a little. Bubba huffed and rolled his eyes before he stood and nodded. Indeed, it better be awesome or I'll be disappointed. Bubba pulled his hoodie tighter around his tall frame before he looked at the mail. Now that he was actually standing next to Marshall he could see that he was indeed slightly taller than him. Somehow it was a bit satisfying to him, as if he had somewhat of an edge on the other male. Trust me it will be awesome, the dark-haired boy said as he led them towards the exit. Bubba noticed that Marceline seemed a little too pleased about both of them leaving, and he noticed her tap away excitedly at her phone as soon as they were out the door. He looked at Marshall with a raised eyebrow. Marceline seems happy to see you go. Marshall let out a soft chuckle as he shook his head. She's just covering up how much she'll miss me. Besides, the lunchtime rush is already mostly over so she can slack off and text whoever it is she's obsessed with. He grinned and glanced back at the cafe before simply shrugging and walking casually down the crowded street. Even if Bubba was taller than the other male, he noticed that Marshall Lee had an extremely long stride and he had to actually try to keep up with the mail. As the two of them walked down streets and past shops Marshall would occasionally point out something that was unique or interesting. It was a rather curious tour and Bubba found himself distracted by a lot of things. The number one thing that seemed to distract both of them was a pet shop they came upon. Yes, we are going in here. Marshall declared with finality as he grabbed Bubba by his pink sweater and pulled him into the small shop. With some minor flailing as he was yanked into the shop, Bubba watched as Marshall went over to the kittens and picked one up. He followed behind and looked at the little kittens as they played together in the small enclosure. He blinked at Marshall's reaction to the kittens and grinned. Do you own a kitten? He asked as he reached out to gently rub the little kitten's ears. Yeah, she's a cute kitty too. The male smiled as he thought of his cute kitten at home. Marceline had protested for a poodle instead, but Marshall had played the older brother card and had gotten them a kitten. Schwabel was an amazing kitten too. What about you? Do you have any pets from whatever far-off land you traveled from? It was said so sarcastically that Bubba could only puff out his cheeks and scowl at the male. It isn't like I live in Australia, but no. I don't personally own any pets because they shed and leave messes. They are cute once in a while though, bow. He was cut off as the cat he was petting scratched his hand and jumped from Marshall Lee's arms and back into the enclosure. Animals also don't seem to like me very much. They tolerate me, but that is about it. The male glowered as Marshall started openly laughing at him. He crossed his arms and sucked on the wound on his hand a bit before he left the shop in frustration and walked briskly down the street. Marshall attempted to hold back his laughter as he followed him out. Wait, bubs. Haha, I'm sorry it was just funny. He tried to hold in his mocking comments as he caught up with the pink-clothed male. Bubba paused and turned around to stare at him. Did you just call me Bubs? His eyebrows shot up in confusion at the nickname. Why was he already being assigned a nickname? He stared at the grinning male and watched as Marshall stuck his tongue out and started walking next to him again. He swore that the male's stride was so long and smooth that it was almost like he was floating. Yes, I did. I like to nickname people. It's a habit of mine. With a shoulder shrug, they crossed the street. Shouldn't you ask someone if you can nickname them? His comments seemed lost on the other man as he only received a shrug before they were walking again. That park is awesome. Marshall pointed out a small park that had a plethora of trees and some iron sculpture work. One thing Bubba had noticed about the area was that most of it was modernized in a city fashion, such as the green park with modern metal sculptures. It was rather interesting to him. They crisscrossed along the grass of the park as Bubba looked at sculptures. It was very nice and the grass was soft to walk on. He turned around to find Marshall missing from his sight. He blinked and looked around for the male, but couldn't seem to see him anywhere. 
Marshal? He said the man's name as he blinked and felt himself start to get angry. Had he really just been ditched at the park? He had decided to give the male a chance to be more civil and had been nicely surprised, but ditching your guests was just rude. I swear if he just left me here dash. Boo! Arf what the fuck! Bubba jumped back as the male suddenly swung down in front of him. He stumbled back a bit and fell onto his ass in the grass. His gaze lifted to meet the teasing upside-down face of the cafe worker. Marshall had climbed the tree and was hanging by his knees so that he could stare at Bubba upside down. He was also grinning from ear to ear. What the hell? That was so rude! Bubba huffed and glared at the male as his hands slowly curled into fists. Marshall simply laughed and grabbed onto the branch before he flipped back onto his feet. Oh come on Bubba, it was harmless fun hee hee. Plus your expression was priceless when you thought I ditched you. His back bumped the tree trunk as he casually leaned against it. More like posed, Bubba swore that Marshall was begging for attention from the passers-by on the park pathway. He bit back a growl as he got to his feet and dusted off his butt. It was not funny. It is rude to play pranks on your guests, Marshall Lee. And you nearly scared me half to death. Bubba crossed his arms and glared half-heartedly at the other male. You're making it very difficult to not harbor ill feelings towards you, Marshall. Marshall just laughed and ran his fingers through his own hair as he walked over to the male. Am I? I promise I'm not intentionally trying to make you harbor negative feelings. I wonder what happens if you care half to death twice? Hee <laughs> hee, the male laughed at the proper language that was being used. Bubba tried his best to keep an angry face. But Marshall's laughter was slightly contagious, and the corner of his mouth twitched upwards slightly despite his best effort. I wouldn't know, so don't do it again. Jerk. He huffed slightly. There were only a few people seated in the cafe, and Marceline made herself busy by cleaning glasses and making sure that everything was somewhat in order. When that was done, she simply slumped in her chair behind the counter and lazily played with a strand of her own hair. When is she going to get here? She wondered in her own head before she heaved a sigh. With a huff and a lazy stride she moved over to the tables to check on the patrons and refill drinks if she needed to. Eventually the little bell above the door sounded and she swiveled on one heeled boot. Her eyes met the long pink-haired girls and immediately she smiled. Remember, play it cool Marcy. She reminded herself before she practically ran over to the girl that had just entered. She half jogged over and just looked at Bonnyville before she grinned wide and teasingly and stepped forward to hug the other female. Hey, I see you made it safely, hee hee. Marcy pulled away to look at her with a wide smile. How many miles had it been? Who knows, because now it was only a couple inches that separated them. Bonnie seemed to look around nervously before she smiled as well. Did they both leave? Marceline nodded and took the other girl's hand before she led her over behind the counter. Technically this was against protocol but whatever, she really didn't give any hoots about rules right now. Nope, dumb and dumber have left the building. Girls only party now. She grinned and Bonnie just rolled her eyes and followed Marceline. She put her available hand that wasn't being held on her hip. My brother is not dumb, I mean I don't really know about your brother but Bubba is simply way too stuck up. She shook her head with an embarrassed smile and both girls grinned at each other mischievously. He also thinks that I was devastated that he left this morning without me. Ha ha brilliant. Lucky for us Marshall decided to give Bubba a tour so now they are out of our hair. Tell me about your flight. Did you have to sit next to any weirdos? The girls started to talk and tell about their recent adventures. It was completely different from Skyping about it now that they could talk in person. Marceline still had to do her work at the cafe, so she made Bonnie a complimentary hot chocolate for the girl to enjoy. Being in person was so much better. Chapter 5. Rain-Soaked Skin As time passed, both men ended up sitting under a tree at the park. Bubba sat with his back to the tree as Marshall calmly laid on his stomach and picked at the freshly cut blades of grass. 
At some point the shorter male had slipped on his jacket, and he now wore it with the sleeves pushed up as he lounged. They had been bantering and a comfortable silence had settled over them as they sat there. Eventually Marshall couldn't stand the silence, and he propped his chin in his hand and looked at the curiously pink male. So, how are you liking Toronto? You came from... He trailed off to pose it as a question as he looked at the mail. San Diego, California. The state of riches and beaches. Toronto is nice, I guess. The clouds are a nice change of weather. You don't get clouds in California? Marshall raises a skeptical eyebrow at the mail and with a chuckle and a shake of his head Bubba replied. Of course we do. Even dry places get clouds. They're just bigger here and more frequent which I find entertaining. He shrugged and glanced up at the sky. Marshall nodded at that revelation as he continued to pull absently at the grass. The park was calm and only a few people walked by, sometimes families, other times just random people. What about you? Why are you in Canada? You don't really have the accent of the area. Bubba spoke up as he stared curiously at the mail. Marshall simply chuckled and rolled over onto his back to look up at the clouds. Asking why he was there was like asking for his life story, which was not something he cared to share. He decided for the simplest answer he could muster. My sister and I moved here after she graduated high school. We wanted something different and getting out of the country sounded nice. Plus we have dual citizenship between Canada and the U.S. He shrugged. That seems very adventurous. The taller male commented and watched as Marshall stared up at the clouds. Why so much pink? Marshall rolled back onto his stomach and tugged at the edge of Bubba's sweater. Even your hair is dyed pink? Are you a hardcore breast cancer awareness supporter? His lips twitched up into a teasing grin as he watched the male huff and sweat his hand away. No, well I am, but that's not why. It's my favorite color. What's wrong with wanting to wear a lot of it? You never get sick of wearing pink? Why not try something like black or red? Marshall was baffled by the idea. Well, I wear royal purple and maroon too. My pants aren't pink. He pointed out the purple pants and Marshall just shook his head. When did you dye your hair? And we started dyeing our hair in middle school, I believe. Bubba tapped his chin thoughtfully as he tried to remember when the hair dyeing had happened. We? My twin sister and I, she has long pink hair. Marshall nodded his understanding. He peered at the male and tried to imagine him as a girl with long hair. It was way too easy to imagine it, and he just snorted in amusement. What is your normal hair color then? Blonde, well more platinum blonde really. It makes dying easier. Marshall nodded to that, and he sat up slightly before he looked at the male's hair curiously and felt a strand of it. Bubba furrowed his brows and looked at the other male in confusion as his hair was inspected. You should totally dye your hair teal while you're up here. The dark-haired male smirked down at Bubba and stuck his tongue out slightly. It would be funny and awesome, or we could just dye it a rainbow. We can give you super awesome gay rainbow hair. With a snicker Marshall felt his hands get swatted away again. No way, I like my hair as it is. If you want to dye someone's hair, why don't we dye your hair rainbow? Bubba watched the male and snickered at the thought. Marshall made a face and shoved the pink male slightly. No way, a rainbow is not my kind of thing. He blinked and shook his head. No way am I dyeing my hair. He chuckled before he paused as he felt a rain drop hit the back of his hand. He blinked and looked up before shifting onto his knees. It's starting to rain. Bubba looked slightly panicked as he got to his feet quickly and looked at the sky warily. Marshall looked at him curiously. Do you really hate the rain that much, dude? He motioned for Bubba to follow as the droplets quickly increased in frequency and started getting bigger. It makes my skin feel gross and sticky and I really do dislike it. Bubba muttered hastily before he walked under an awning of a small candle shop so that they were out of the rain. Marshall quickly joined him and shook the fresh droplets from his hair unceremoniously. 
He looked out at the rain as it very quickly picked up speed and strength to start drenching the streets. It will stop soon, correct? Bub appeared at Marshall and then at the rain. Depends. Most storms can last for several hours or even days. Once it lets up a little we can probably make it back to the cafe and hang out there. He scoffed at the expression worn by the pink-haired male. What? No one ever died from a little bit of water. We'll be fine. That doesn't mean I have to like it. They continued to bicker slightly before Marshall gave up tormenting the male about his rain phobia and leaned against the wall. You know, I thought we might be getting along, but you seem to hold a grudge against me. He commented as he himself leaned back against the wall. His dark bangs shadowed his face slightly, and he watched Bubba curiously, his ever-present smirk in place. Bubba blinked at Marshall's comment and shook his head before he paused to think about how he was acting. No, I don't hold a grudge against you. You're just not the most polite person, and you tease a lot. You're kind of hard to read, too. Bubba made sure that his hair was still gelled upwards and that the rain hadn't completely flattened it. I'm an enigma, it seems. Like a vampire that no one understands. Mwahaha. He pretended to laugh easily as he leaned over towards the male neck and was promptly swatted away, which only caused him to laugh more. Ha ha ha, ouch. At least I'm not using physical violence. Bubba rolled his eyes and crossed his arms. He resisted the urge to laugh or smile at the joke because that would just be giving Marshall too much solid ground when it came to their strange banter. If his sister heard them, she would probably scold him lightly for his behavior, but they were on vacation so he saw no reason to act completely proper. Marshall had a strange way of making him want to just relax. He blamed the male's deep, soothing voice. After some time spent underneath the awning the rain let up enough and both boys made a mad dash back to the cafe. They were fairly wet when they got there and Bubba groaned at the wet feeling that creeped over his skin. Undoubtedly his hair was probably completely messed up as well. I should have known we would get caught in the rain. He muttered before smiling at Marshall and shrugging it off. Bubba had to do a double take though as he noticed his sister sitting at a table with Marceline. He waved to his twin only to get an excited smile in return. That was quite the smile and he was immediately pleased that his sister and Marceline seemed to be getting along quite nicely. Well, don't they just look like two peas in a pod? Marshall commented dryly, or rather wetly, behind him as he attempted to fix his wet hair. Yeah, that's my sister Bonnie. Bubba started to make his way over to the table so he missed Marshall's sarcastic comment. I had no idea, the long pink hair and girl version of you. It makes so much sense. Even your names, Bonnie and Bubba. He chuckled before making his way over and it wasn't long before they were all chatting about how they had met up. Marshall reluctantly donned his work apron again and had to wait on tables and pour them drinks, to which Bubba teased him relentlessly. It was funny, 